all the admonition that is due your name that this earthen vessel can give to you, Father. We turn over every thought that goes against the will and the hope and the power of the living God. Father, we pull down every stronghold that wants to make us weary and hopeless, have us distracted and off purpose, oh God. We come together today touching and agreeing in the midst that whatever we have need of according to your will has been answered now in the name of Jesus. We know that there is power coming together, Father. Yes, we Lord. come together, touching in this moment, in the realm of the Spirit, yes, sword yes, to Lord. sword, oh God, yes, ready yes, to Lord. defend the prayer that's yes, coming yes, uh, answer from heaven. Thank you, God, we yes. thank you right now for each and every person inside of these four walls. God, we thank you, and we ask that the Holy Spirit begin to teach, move about this place. Have your way and your will in this house, oh God. Yes, Deliver, set free, Father. Yes, Let us be free from captivity, Father bondages of our mind, familiar spirits of the past, oh God. Thank Every you, earthly distraction, oh God, may we walk in the spirit. And after each meeting and coming together, oh God, let it not be a meeting that is in vain. Let it be full of power. Yes. Let us walk as senior leaders in the realm of the spirit, oh God, knowing that every prayer is answered the moment we pray it. We pray, Father, right now that our prayers will line up according to your will and not our way, God, as we don't want to pray amiss. We don't want to pray trouble on somebody else while we're getting blessed, oh God. We want everything to line up according yes, to your will yes, so that when the wave of the answer prayer comes in, all those that are in the wave, oh God, will be blessed as we are also blessed. And we also pray, Father, not to forget to be a blessing unto others. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. amen. Bless you, bless you, bless you. You got to get a seat, sweetheart. How y'all doing today? Yes? A couple questions I want to ask. What's our prayer life like? Mm -hmm. Is it stronger yes. than before? Is it the same? Is it a harder struggle? What are we feeling like? Stronger. Stronger. Anyone else? Better. Pretty much the same. More. Okay. Amen. Increase. Increase. Okay. Well, that's a good thing then. That's a good thing. We, we are combating the devil because I'm praying for y'all. And I'm praying that um, he leave y'all alone because this is destiny time. And if you don't leave you alone, then I'm praying that the warfare that I do in my prayer time is going to push back that demon. I want someone to describe for me just briefly in our overview, what is prayer? Very important. So what is prayer? That's all right. Okay. Close. Anyone else have it a little closer? Okay, yeah, come on. Prayer is man giving heaven an earthly license to influence earth. Right, it's giving heaven a license because we're here. In some ways, unfortunately, we're stuck. We're the ones here on earth. So we have to give heaven permission. So Dr. Miles Monroe uses it as an earthly license. And it makes so much sense, doesn't it? Because God does everything by laws and decrees, and he's not a man that goes against his own laws and decrees. So when we, when we need to give permission, God has given us power, rule, and dominion on the earth. We have complete authority here. If only we knew it. All right? Look at some of our struggles, our situations, and it looks like we have no power. It looks like God just kicked us down here with Satan and said, all y'all get out of my house. I'm tired of all of y'all. I'm kicking Satan out, and I'm kicking y'all out with him. And now we're down here, and all of a sudden we realize he's kicked us out, but we don't like him either. So now we're down here with Satan, and we have no power. He kicks our butt. He does what he wants. He shows up when he wants to. We think we bless when he leaves us alone. But we have to understand that we were sent here to fight Satan. Oh, my God. He could have sent us anywhere he wanted to. He said, I've given y'all power, rule, dominion, going back to Genesis. And the apostles, house, y'all know we learning that. And now I need y'all to kick his butt for me. And we're all afraid of the devil. Don't mention his name. Maybe he won't show up. <laughs> right? Because we haven't been built up enough in prayer. So what we do while we're here, God and his angels are like, I need somebody to call on my name. I need someone to pull my host of angels down to earth so I can help them do this warfare. But instead, we cussing at the devil, <laughs> praying people out of our lives, <laughs> and believe that those prayers get answered, that we can pray people out of our lives but we can't pray that the will of God take place in our lives and those that's bothering us Amen. or bothering God, however we want to look at it. 
So we have to understand that when we get, touch and agree in the realm of the spirit, in prayer, we are given earth, a heaven, a license to operate on earth because he gave us the dominion. God didn't want a domain here. That's why he sent us. So what we do, we connect with him. And the only way to do it is through prayer. And we have to get out of that little itsy bitsy baby praying. Always whining and crying. If you study the word of God, you will find out that God does not answer prayers because it's that heavy for us or that bad for us. He doesn't answer prayer because we crying or because we, we his favorite or he's we've done so much. You ever prayed? But God, I've done so much for you. You ever prayed those prayers? I used to do that a lot. God, I'd have let that boy go for you. You know I like Tim. You ain't, you ain't even answer. You're not even helping him stay away from me. Like, like God owe me something. He don't owe us anything. But he wants to give us everything because he wants to connect with us. But it's in the realm of the spirit where God connects with us. Some people cuss at the devil. I cuss them. No, I, I literally cuss them, Apostle. I use cuss words at them. I'm like, what he do? He said, thanks for, spe he said, thanks for speaking in tongues to me? Because that's his language. So you just spoke in his language to him. Like, so much goes on back and forth. You ever talk to people about prayer? It's a heavy issue. People could tell you more about Hebrew, Aramaic, Arabic, Greek, than they can about prayer. One of the least attended functions or meetings or fellowship in the church is prayer how can you be a believer how can you be a christian if you don't pray but yet you call on prayer when people come to bible study but prayer and the reason why people are not coming out for prayer is because their prayers are getting answered so because they're not getting answered people are losing hope doesn't it do it to you yeah. anybody been praying for like a couple years and see no result on many different things uh -huh. yes and nothing is happening. You're like, it's not even like you purpose to stop praying. Your flesh just don't feel the zeal and don't want to move anymore. And then he's got us. Then it seems seems like as soon as I stopped praying, everything started working out. <laughs> yeah? I can tell whose side you're leaning on. Because <laughs> God is going to cause you to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. To get with God is not going to be uh, always comfortable. It, it's that comfortable after a while. Because it gets to a point where getting up, if he calls you to midnight prayer, or if he calls you to 5 a.m. prayer, or some people he calls the 3 a.m. prayer, once you've gotten to that connection, I call it crossing the flesh lines, that yellow tape. Mm -hmm. Once you cross those flesh lines, you realize how much you really can do. It's not a bother anymore. I get upset when I don't wake up. When I'm so tired, I don't wake up for prayer. I wake up, man. <laughs> And I don't like praying at noontime or 10 in the morning. It's not the same effect for me. For me, it has to be early morning where I am uncomfortable, my attitude stinks, and I got to walk into the presence of God and tell him how blessed he is and how holy he is and how he's the big God and he's better than anybody else and he's king of kings. And you're sitting there like, I am so tired. <laughs> That's the time for me because I have to be stretched. And once I'm stretched, I could feel God moving. But when I just, like, oh, I'm just going to have noontime prayer. That does nothing for me. I mean, I can do it. We do it. We've had to go to the hospitals, so on and so forth. But that early morning stretch, has anybody grabbed a hold of that hour yet? The early riser prayer. Yes. Amen. And it is a stretch, isn't it? Yes. But it is so necessary. Yes. So necessary. And for night hawks like me, it's probably good because it will cause you to start going to bed earlier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because I am an all-night girl. When I was in the streets, I was all night. And for some reason, that spirit has not left me. Or either the Lord called me. I said a long time ago, my father used to work third shift. And I was so in love with my father, I used to have to go to work with him at night. And my mother would be so mad at me because I got school, I got everything else. But I, I was not letting that man leave me. Mm -hmm. So I would go third shift with him to work. One time he was sick. He was a security guard. While the Sheridan and the Civic Center was being built. No walls, nothing. Cold. They made, they made a, um, a little office out of sheetrock, mm -hmm. and that's where we were. And we had to go to every floor and punch a clock to prove that he checked every floor so nobody wasn't still. No walls at the Sheridan. Now it's on the third name or something. Civic Center is something else already. But that's where I was being raised, I believe, as an intercessor mm. because I was up all night with him. And I knew if I did it all night, I would get that chocolate honey dip in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> And everything would be all right. I remember one time, he, he, yeah, he gave me a chocolate honey dip now. God bless me. I'm all right. I'm good. 
Y'all ain't rolling with me today. Y'all ain't rolling with me today. So, since y'all started this talk early in the morning, so, um, put me all in my flesh. So, after that, it was like everything in my life structured to me being up all night. So now I'm up all night. But when 3.30, 4.30 come, I'm about ready to fall asleep. 5, 5.30 a.m. prayer call is there. So now when you find yourself making yourself get up at that early in the morning, you will fall asleep earlier at night. Mm -hmm. 10, 11 o'clock, it looks real nice to you. The eyes get heavy yes. and you don't want to. You know, everybody used to your hours. So everybody's calling me or texting me or people getting online because they know I'm up. And they'd be like, what happened to you last night? I'm like, man, that 5 a.m. prayer, it caught up with me after a few nights. It catches yeah. up with yeah. you. But is there anyone else in here that has a time that is the time you just know that that's an hour that God wants you with him? Anyone different between that, like I said, that 5, 5.30 a.m. time? 2.30 for you? 2 o'clock. 3? 3. Wow. What time I go to You wake up at that time. I go to bed at 2. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyone else? How many in this room desire that? You love to have that good. Where the Holy Ghost wakes you up. Oh, yeah. That's good. And you tell him, not right now. <laughs> and he's like, no, baby, we married. <laughs> when I wake you up, I want you to get up. I'm not that man of flesh that's going to accept your no. I want you up. Come on. If we learn these methods, especially for single people, if we learn these methods with God, obeying him first, marriage will be so much easier for you. But when you're disobedient to him, Disobedience follows us all the way down the line. There's no way you can say that you just you obey God. I do what God tells me to do. And everybody else around you like, well, where is that carried out at in the rest of your life? Prayer is very important. So it's us giving heaven a license. Move in this area. We need you in this situation. What else? Anyone else have another one? I know it's giving God a legal right. It's giving him permission to interfere. Do you know that we have to give, we can give God permission to interfere in our affairs? Amen. How many in here have, have just gone through things and just gone through them? Amen. And never even bothered. I don't want to bother God. Is that was your result, Taisha, because you didn't want to bother him? Pretty much, right? We don't want to bother God. Isn't that so sweet of us? <laughs> Seriously. Like, that is so sweet of us. But again... It's a work of the enemy because it, it's, we're not being taught that God wants to interfere. Mm -hmm. How many years have you all heard or, or been the one that said, I don't want to bother God. God got so much going on. And that's a, that's a, that's a, a hopelessness spirit that we've got to cast out of our life because God wants us on it. In yeah. fact, God wants us on so much more. He wants us handling so much more than what we're doing. You know, there should be someone every day in our walk that we witness to. Every day. How many of y'all stay in the house every single day? You don't leave your house at all. Exactly. So there is somebody you've come in contact to that should have got to know something about Christ. Something. Your smile. That's it. Hello, how are you? You got to go, you know, Jesus loves you. They, they, them Christians tried that on me. That didn't work with me. Okay, y'all was. I was Paul. I was apostle. I crucified them Christians before he converted me. You can't tell me he. Why? why he, I didn't ask him to love me. That was my attitude. So you have to find a better way to witness to people. Every single day, you should have some kind of spiritual contact with people in your your day. We go and we rush and we in a hurry. We got all this stuff going on, and the world's not meeting Christ. But I got to get to church where everybody know Christ. Can somebody help me with that? I don't need your witness in here. Your testimony is a blessing. It's lifted my faith up another level. But I already know Christ. Who have you reached throughout the week that does not know him? That's what prayer does for you. When you're in prayer and in contact with God, when you have exchanged that license in the realm of the heavens, in the realm of the earth, God will set up appointments for you. Let me tell you how powerful prayer is. You could think it, and the answer will already come. I have tapped into a realm with God where I have to watch what I think. 
You know when you get them sick, crazy thoughts, when the devil start invading your mind and you having all kinds, you be like, Lord Jesus, what did I tell? Did I touch somebody today? Was I wrong around spirit? I don't even think like this. Where are these thoughts coming from? You have to be very careful when you tap into a realm of the spirit with God where you think a thing and it already happened. God's already moving because you got into that place of exchange with him that he knows you're not coming to him looking for your will and your way. You're seeking his will. No matter how much it hurts me, there is a joy when your faith knows that whatever happens in this situation, I know God got it. If it doesn't work in my favor, I know God got it. When you can reach that level in faith, and your prayers are like, God, this is what I want. This is what I need. I know you know what's going on with little Pookie and them. I know you know what's going on in my house. I know you know what's going on in my job. But I know you got it. And walk away and be like, whatever. If I get fired today, it's not because I purposely did something. It's not because I wasn't walking in the fruit of the spirit in the workplace. God got this. Yes. When you reach that place with God, you sleep better at night. Amen. You can pray for other people and you're not even worrying about it. You sit there in the car like, let me connect real quick with heaven. Get to the place, stuff already worked out for you. you when, when God can trust you to pray his will and not yours, everything changes. But then you have to be a steward over your thoughts. You have to cast down every imagination that exalts itself. Them homosexual thoughts, lesbian thoughts, stealing something. Oh, my marriage didn't work out, but this other married man and I, we've been connecting. Is this of God? Oh, come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do all of this. Mm -hmm. We're praying. One of the prayers we're praying right now in the church is a side of Samson that went after the things that God wasn't offering him. Mm -hmm. When the things that God offer you aren't enough. When, men, when there's saved men and women in your church and you out there looking for sinners to get hooked up with. Mm -hmm. When you meet other saved men and women, whatever arena you meet them in. But what God has to offer you, I know women in this church that dog every Christian man that's single, but go out there and pick the craziest looking lunatics I ever met in my life. Wow. But what God has to offer, I, I hit something with your brother, what God has to offer ain't good enough. That's a side of Samson that we got to pull down, especially for my young people. Oh, he's corny. Why he's corny? But when you see him in that full anointing, and you see him in that pulpit, and he done got little senorita who's sitting up here cheering him on while he preaching his first sermon, and he wasn't good enough for you, it changes. The anointing is attractive. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I've been attracted to some preachers whose head was this way, eyes was this way, and I'm like, man, man. Single had a choice of whoever I wanted. When that anointing comes forward, come on, y'all. When that anointing comes forward, I'm trying to tell you something. <laughs> but we got people in the church, mm, I'd rather go out there and, and, and get from the other nation. I'd rather get the uncircumcised. <laughs> go on. Mm -hmm. See how long we going to have you in church. Mm -hmm. Your head going to be spinning. Yeah. Your tail going to be too sore to sit on because yeah, the devil going to be whipping you down. Yeah. But you don't want a saved brother or sister who may not have it together, mm -hmm. may not be fashionista because their priorities are different. Right. They don't need a Louis Vuitton belt. Nope. They don't need to carry a Louis Vuitton pocketbook. Mm -hmm. They're seeking after God. Yes. But that ain't good enough. You want the one that come into church and look like, right? And everybody's looking at the outfit saying nice, but the outfit on the inside is empty, barren, dysfunctional, unhealthy, have no honor of you, doesn't know their purpose. <sighs> I can't go there right now. But y'all hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The anointing is attractive. Yeah. Let God do what he got to do in you. Mm -hmm. It's hard when you start out in God as you and you meet your mate. And then you grow in God. Because one of y'all are after him. Usually more than the yeah. other one. Mm -hmm. And your anointing is like this now. And you're just like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And they're like, you better slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you got to live with me still. Never mind all this Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because when he comes in, he takes over. And you can tell people that have had that encounter with him where he's taken over. And it comes from prayer. It comes from prayer more than it comes from reading your word. Reading your word should make you want to pray. Prayer should make you want to read your word. But when you've been in prayer with God, he will give you sermons. God will talk to you in his biblical language. And you have to go look up the scripture to find out what he's saying to you. Prayer is the answer. We cannot afford to t attend Bible studies, even Sunday services, 
We cannot afford to attend all these concerts and these events and our prayer life ain't right. Amen. And I close on this section, on this part, what I stressed to y'all from the beginning. Your fasting life should never be greater than your prayer life. Fasting is the icing on the cake, but you gotta have a cake to put the icing on. Jesus said to his own disciples, this kind only come out from I, 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 from what? Prayer. 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 Prayer and fasting. I fast every day, 40 days. I fast every five days a week. I have this fast. I fast three days a week. You ain't even praying. Right. We've got to we've got to tap up on our prayer life. You have to have a prayer life. You don't even know if you need fasting. Some of these issues can be handled with a prayer. And some of us, we've turned, Christians have turned fasting into diets. I hate it. It's, yeah, you will lose weight. But if you're not careful, you will gain more than you did Amen. before the fast. Come on. I need to get you on this prayer. I need to get that wheel spinning on the inside of you that makes you say, I want to get that. I want to feel like that. I want to be able to do that. I want to see results when I pray the first time. Amen. I don't want to be praying two years looking for something. So we've got to give him permission, don't we? Amen. God is spirit without a physical body came as Jesus to give us an example of how we're supposed to work it out. And what was Jesus always doing? Pray. And outside of that, he was around the people. So what makes you have to pray? People. Some of y'all wouldn't be snapping at everybody if y'all had a prayer life. Every single thing bothers you. You can go through the whole church and pick on everybody in the whole church. And I'm looking like, you need to get in prayer. Because how do you see all of that? You down here, you at squirrel level. You need to get at eagle level. Ain't many up there. It's easier up there. Come up here where we at. Y'all hear me? There's not many up here. It's less problems. What people see down here is mountains. We look down there and say, oh, that was a mountain that we, you know, we just flew over that one. But when you stay at this level, people level, Jesus had a ministry. Y'all do, some of you will have a ministry. All of you will. Some of you have it already, a ministry. That's people. You cannot have ministry without prayer. You're wasting your time. It will burn you out. People will suck the blood out of you. And every time you try to go to the well to get more, they take that from you. The only thing that has kept me to last these nine years is prayer. Somebody would have been got cussed out. I'm telling you the truth. The flesh ain't far away, y'all. It's my prayer life that keeps me silent and tight. Y'all be like, you just love everybody. Not really. That's the Holy Ghost. When you have a prayer life, it's easy to love. It's easy to forgive. It's easy to forget. Ooh. Prayer. This is what prayer does. You cannot be a Christian and not have a prayer life. You will not last. You will find yourself in hypocrisy. I feel disconnected. What was your last prayer like? Yeah, you want to come pray with me? No, nah, you pray too long, Apostle. Well, I'm not disconnected. I felt disconnected in church before. And I blame the leaders. I blame everybody. And there was a lot of issues in the church. Needless to say, there's always going to be a lot of issues in every church because we in it. If it was just Jesus and Michael and Gabriel and we went and sat under their ministry, you know, we'd probably be dead. They'd probably kill us for some of our behaviors. However... When you're dealing with people in ministry, you're not going to make it without prayer. What have I stressed to you in these 15 minutes? Prayer. And the importance of prayer. We cannot play around with this. We cannot. Does prayer really work? Yes. It builds intimacy with God. It, build, it makes you believe, if not know, I'm his friend. I'm his daughter. Like I know God loves me. No matter what I go through, even if I even if I believe it's him allowing this to happen to me, I cry and tell him how bad it hurts, but I love you so much. I know you got my back. When you get to that intimate place with God, where you know, God, <laughs> this is not right. He exposed your business. God, you, uh, who would do that? God said, I need this thing to get out of you. And I've tried to get this out of you between you and I in prayer time. You refuse to turn this over to me. So now I'm putting you on front street. 
and I cried, God, why would you do this to me? It's so embarrassing. He says, but I got you. People going to leave. I'll send more, but you got to get it right. You got to get this clean. Don't worry about them folks that leave you. Do y'all hear me? Don't worry about them folks that leave you. He's going to send more. And guess what? As you grow, the people he sends you grow. So now when the church doors are open, y'all know how we do it here. When the church doors are open, you remember the six steps of discipleship? What's joining our church is already at the six steps of discipleship. And I'm still trying to preach it to the house. You got to tithe. You got to be repented. You got to get convicted. You got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. got to be baptized in water. I'm like, well, I don't know when I'm going to have time to be at church and get baptized in water. And people come in. I'm already baptized. I'm already filled with the Holy Ghost. I've already repented. I've heard the word. I understand that my sins are wrong. I'm convicted by the word before God. I'm already a tither. Can I get involved in this ministry? Amen. And I'm like, God, what happened? He said, you grew up. And as you grow up, I send in more mature people. That's right. Somebody clap their hands. Right. Right. Come on. That's what you want in ministry. I'm sharing this with you because of your ministry. As you allow God to break and build, break and build, break and build, what he sends you will be better every time. Can you handle it, though? First, can you handle the breaking? <laughs> There's a prophetic death. We're going to talk about that sometime. Well, that's the pastor class, but... There's a prophetic death. There's an apostolic death. There's an apostle's death. It's a death walk. And many don't make it. And guess what I found out? The reason that it's so hard, like why do you have to make it so hard, God? So only the real ones make it in. Because if you're not called to be a prophet, you're designed like, man, I ain't got time, but I'm just going to go and cheat. I'm going to become a medium because prophets can read minds. That's part of the gifting. So those who don't tap into the realm of the spirit are just reading minds, reading hearts. They're not hearing what God is saying. So they get a word of knowledge, right? Y'all know how to do it. I've done it. And I said to Misha, I said, when I got in the car, I said, that didn't feel right. I said, I felt like I read their heart. And that wasn't what God was saying. So I watched, I observed, I prayed a little while and found out that oh, I needed to go in deeper with God for that answer. So we've got to be very careful. We, we have that opportunity. That's where that's why it's called medium. Because we stay in the medium. We never tap into where God actually is. And in the medium, you got all kind of seers and seancers and Ouija boarders and everything else going on. So when you tap into prayer, you got to make sure you tap in. You got to go in. You can't be comfortable here. It, it has to make you feel like this is too hard for me. When you tap into well, this is too hard for me, you're in the right place. You're in the right place. You're in more than the right place. You're on your way. We were trying to finish off in chapter one last week. Did anybody have any questions up until the point where we stopped? I think we stopped. Was it at number 10? We have more books, by the way. If anybody didn't get their books. 23? All right. If anybody didn't get their books, there's more in the back. I don't know if they made you aware of it when they came in. Well, they should be in the back, but there's more. So we stopped at 23. Any questions up to that point? Let's, let's talk about this last one then before we move on to the next chapter. How do we know that Jesus always expected his prayers to be heard by God the Father? And what does it say? Come on, read it. Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. You heard what he said? I thank you. For hearing me? Is that what your version said? I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. Isn't that a wonderful way to end a prayer? Mm -hmm. Somebody have their Bible? Read it to me. Um, 11, 41 through 42. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Wow. So he prayed knowing his stuff was answered. He was heard. Is it only for Jesus? No. 
-hmm. So we're mature enough in here where I don't have to go back and break down all of that, right? Mm -hmm. That's for all of us. Mm -hmm. That was the purpose of God coming in flesh to show us that in flesh, this is all that we can accomplish. Mm -hmm. How many of us go in with that attitude? We go in prayer knowing that my stuff is answered. Amen. Be real. Amen. Right. Right. Some days I go in. Some days, listen, some days the stuff that I have to pray sometimes, I'm not even sure what I want to pray. I don't know his will on it. For for people's life and death, well, I, know, I know God has shown me they are not going to live. How do you pray that prayer? That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. When you're praying for someone and God's saying, that's not my answer. And yeah, and you, you, you kind of like, you know, especially if you're praying with them, for well, God, your will be done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's when you go to that person and you say to them, wait a minute, wait a minute, what is God saying? Because usually you be like, I decree and I declare. And now you're saying, God, let your will be done. What is God saying to you? I had a pastor call me last week, Apostle, what has God showed you? And I'm like, he ain't showed me nothing. I mean, what's going on? And then as soon as we hung up the phone, the Holy Spirit said to me, they want to know if they're going to die. Call them back and tell them that I've told you nothing about them dying. I was like, okay. I called back and I said, the Holy Spirit revealed that you want to know if he showed me that you're going to, because they're very sick. And I said, he hasn't showed me that. And she erupted in praise. She was crying. She is such a sick place that she really, the devil is now at a place where he's speaking to her. Because when the natural, with these eyes, everything is going against the report of faith. But she wanted to know, what did you hear? So what if I did hear that? What do you say to somebody like that? As ambassadors in prayers, we have to have the answers. So we have to know how to speak to people. Amen. We can't stay ghetto, y'all. That's right. We can't be heartless. Well, the Lord said you're going to die and you need to accept it. Can't do that one either. <laughs> well, you know, you need to love Jesus so much that, you know, whatever he says, that's a scary thing. So sometimes a nice way to put it is I'm praying the will of God. And if they want to talk to you afterwards privately, you should take the time, go through with scriptures, prepare them for whatever amount of anointing God has given you to do. But we need to go in knowing that God is going to answer that prayer. Can I get your minds that way? Mm -hmm. When I pray. So I have to be careful not to pray my will. That's what this prayer is saying. That's what this scripture is saying. I cannot go in here praying my will. I've gotten out of the point where I go in saying what I want. I go in and say, God, show me so I can go and do. I can't move until you tell me what to do on this, what to say, where to be. Do I go here? Do I not go here? Do I say something? Do I ignore it? What do I do? Not God anoint me to go do this. God, I need to be where you want me to be. So I know you heard my prayer. And sometimes people of God, this is what we don't want to do. That also applies to prayer. Sometimes we got to be quiet. I've had prayers that have taken me 24 to 48 hours where I've had to stay in the house to hear the answer from God. Because being around busy people and shopping malls and hanging out with the girlfriends, he can talk to you, of course, but can you hear him? So sometimes I have to stay in, play the prayer music. I have some CDs that just say scriptures all day long. He just reads scriptures, scriptures. And in those moments, the whole house is covered. And all of a sudden, clearly, it could be through, sometimes it could be through music or through something in the house. And you'll see the answer right there. It sounds weird. But when you've decided to consecrate yourself, some prayers require a consecration. That you've got to shut yourself down. We're going to find out going further in the book that sometimes God doesn't answer for certain reasons. Woo! So some of our stuff is held up because he's waiting on you. So we've got it. Believers are called to be God's priests and ambassadors in the world through prayer and intercession. You can be effective. You can be an effective prayer. You can have an effective prayer life that will overflow into all other areas of life when you discover how to approach God and learn the kind of prayer God responds to. What kind of prayer does God respond to? Faith. 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 Go in believing and you shall receive. It is God's desire that you experience intimacy with him and spiritual strength 
to fulfill his purpose. When you understand the biblical principles of the art of prayer, you will begin to communicate with God with power, grace, and confidence. Write that down. Because when we start having prayer, a couple people, I had have, I have opened it up that if anyone wanted to have private prayer with me because they have a shyness that they need to overcome in order to pray, a couple people responded and jumped on it, and you will hear from, from uh, Misha on the day that we'll do it. Because you need to get bold in prayer. That is a gift that God has given us. And we cannot go in there timid. That's the one place you need to have a big mouth. That's the one place that you need to go in there cocky and bold. Tearing down walls. That one place. Not how you approach your brothers and sisters. Or how you deal with things on the work. The one place that you ought to go in believing and acting bold in it is in prayer. So you need to go with power, grace, and confidence. Little timid people, don't move God. I'm not going to say he doesn't answer your prayer, but he's like, come on, baby, I gave you this. How you holding the Uzi and you shooting all over the place? Or you don't have enough capacity in you to fire this thing off. You getting blown away. You know how much he's given us? I like to think of it like, who is it, Einstein? Who's the one that says we're only using like 1% or 10% of our Einstein, brain? Man, That's how God sees us when it comes to prayer. Y'all using 1%, 10% of this thing. I need you to tap into the more with power, grace, and confidence. These principles will help you to clear the obstacle of unanswered prayer so that you can enter into a new dimension of faith, deep love for God, and power for service. Let's think from this for a moment. Which of the following best describes the current role of prayer in your life? Is it a, and you know, we're in the book on page 18. Is it a religious exercise or ritual? An obligation that feels burdensome? Meaningful communion and intercession with God? Or a non-existent role? And you, you think about it. What, what is your current prayer life? And it's, and it's okay to be honest. It's your book. But you, you, we're using this just as a foundation. And we will go back over this book, and you're going to see how it has improved for you. Because I'm going to be honest with y'all. I have no problem with being honest. My first year was a religious habit of form. I had to literally make myself do it for a year until I broke obstacles and barriers. And you know where the barrier was? In my mind. In my mind. Is God really here? Is God really needing me here? Am I crazy? You know, I don't know what y'all go through. My, my, I have psychological warfare. That's my fight from the enemy. And when I go into prayer, I always feel like somebody's watching me. Somebody's looking at me. I look around. I feel embarrassed. You know, when God woke me up at 2 in the morning and I was in sleep before with a guy and I had to get out of the bed and literally go in the bathroom to pray, I'm like, God caught me. I'm in sin. And that's when I knew this calling was going to be crazy. Because if he calling me now, <laughs> he's not going to let me choose this thing. And I felt embarrassed. You know, now I, I look, I, I love it. I love being at the hairdresser, reading my Bible, making sure everybody sees it. <laughs> I love it. I get a kick out. And sometimes I'll do this to see who's staring at me. <laughs> I want them to see. Yeah, I'm reading my Bible. I'm not putting no pretty Bible cover on. I'm taking it out. I want you to see. I'll be in public places, and I got my Bible out. Amen. Some people will look, some people will type, some people will smile. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I was in the bookstore. I bought this little table in the house, and they had this old, old King James Version. It looked like um, from, what's my one of my favorite movies? Book of Eli. Eli. Looks like that version of the King James, and I bought it. And when, uh, people were looking at it in line. Because, you know, people in the bookstore hate Jesus. I don't know if y'all know about these bookstores. Ain't no Jesus lovers in the bookstore. That's why the section is this big. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. the reason, if, if it was more Jesus lovers, they would have a bigger section because they're about the money. They don't care. Mm -hmm. But if it's this big, it's telling us that there's no demand for stuff. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got to the checkout, the girl said, this is a beautiful version of the King James Bible. And she's loud and she then was wrapped up so she couldn't open it. It was just beautiful covered. I wanted to put on this wrap. Beautiful. I want to be bold with it. I want people to see. But when you do that, you've got to be ready because people are going to come to you with their problems worse than drunks do a bartender. <laughs> I've had people come to me after I leave the hairdresser. Excuse me, can, can, can I talk to you for a moment? Just because they saw the Bible. Be bold with it, but make sure you got a prayer life because you want to be able to help them. Amen?
Amen. Be bold with it. So if it starts out as a habit or a ritual, don't let anybody tell you you're a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. You know what? I might look like that right now, but I'm working on something. Yes. And I'm, I'm, my study habits may look fake to you or not consistent to you, but I know I've been in church a long time. But I'm just starting to grab a hold how important prayer is. And yeah, you do see my attitude going into prayer with God. And God doesn't like that attitude. But I'm going to keep going until I give up this attitude. Amen. I'm going to yes, keep going until I surrender this attitude. Yes. I'm going to keep going until this doubt leaves me alone. So when I go in prayer, I can go in using the same right Jesus did. God, thank you for hearing my prayer. I know that you already answered. I'm just saying it so the other side of me will get the point here. Because my flesh is fighting this prayer time. Do y'all talk to yourselves? Yes. Because y'all know we ain't stable, right? <laughs> you know we some unstable people. Amen. You don't keep your word to other people and they think you unstable. How many times have you not been able to keep your word to yourself? You know you unstable. We ain't got to have a whole lesson on that. You are unstable. <laughs> Prayer keeps you stable. So be honest about it. Those of y'all who put your hand up who want that, that early morning prayer time, it's going to be habitual. It's going to be religious. You're going to get sick of hearing yourself. I sometimes sat there and been like, you know what? This is fake, and you know you're faking it. <laughs> Literally, out loud, y'all. I'm being honest. So I said, okay, I got to add some, something to this. What I got? I'm going to read some. I'm going to read a psalm every time I come into prayer. and That'll help an hour go by. Put the prayer CD on so I know it was an hour. So I could stop right at an hour. Because it took, after 10 minutes, I had 50 minutes to fake the rest of this prayer time. Yeah. Come on, I called my prayer music was 60 minutes so I know that I was getting my hour in. And when it ended, I was like, hallelujah to you too. Because I stopped talking 50 minutes because I was writing shopping lists. I was thinking of what I want to do tomorrow, what I'm going to wear. Come on, that's the mind. So for a year, it's going to be a habit. And the enemy's going to haunt you and taunt you and make you feel stupid, make you feel like you're wasting your time, do it. Mm -hmm. Then you know what I did? I decided I'm not going in in regular clothes. I went online to a Jewish place. I ordered me a prayer robe. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to get this flesh, and we're going to tear this stinking flesh down. So I made a point that I would shower, put on my prayer robe, nothing else, and get a prayer room. Mm -hmm. And everything in that prayer room, I, I cleaned out a bedroom in the house. I cleaned it out, went around the whole room reading scriptures, and everything I bought for that room, I put oil on it and blessed it. Yeah, Old Testament, yeah, you crazy, you right, but I am crazy. Mm -hmm. So it took off that to shut my flesh down mm -hmm. and gain some control over it. So everything in that room was new. People would give me gifts. If I didn't feel led to put it in there, I'd put it in another room in the house. This place has to be sanctified because yeah. I'm at war with my mind. Mm -hmm. My mind is crazy. So when I go in there, then, then the demon would say, okay, so now what, you think you got power because you took a bath and, and, and you got a prayer robe on? I'm, I'm still in the room here with you. And I'm like, you could sit there, but I'm going to go ahead and talk to this wall. And I'm sitting here, nothing but a candle lit. And I'm talking and I'm talking and I'm talking and I'm talking. Took a year. And then one day, I'll never forget as long as I live. I felt the move of God in that room, in that one place. I came out, I was like, oh my God, I was afraid to go back in. It was such a, my flesh feared what happened in that room. That's when I knew it tapped in. But if I didn't take a chance and fake it and conquer my thoughts, conquer those voices and continually press into this place where I believed I want to go with God. Because my whole deal was this. I need to know if he's real. Yeah. I cannot do church and it's not real. So if he's not real, the rest of this stuff is not going to matter to me. I refuse to be a hypocrite. Amen. I'm too transparent. And I tell too much on myself to go to church faith. I can't do it. So I had to push myself and push myself and push myself till I got into that place. Now, some years later, what I ask for in prayer happens. So guess what the fight is now? Now that I know he answers my prayer, I can show you my journal of what I put in that I pray for. Some stuff I've been bold enough to put deadlines on it. God met deadlines that I put because I was praying according to his will. So what happens now? Now the flesh be like, oh, girl, it's, you know you got it. You ain't got to go through all that. You ain't got to go in the prayer room. Just pray from the bed. He answers you anytime you want now. Satan, still talking. Nope, I'm getting up. I'm getting and I make myself get up. So no, it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. No, we got a nice foundation to keep us on in class to make sure that we're moving and we're, and we're, we're accomplishing some things. But y'all need to hear the testimony of real people who really pray. Mm -hmm. And you need to understand that the struggles you got, I had them. Mm -hmm. 
But if I didn't, wasn't willing to push past it, and let me tell you the biggest lie the devil keeps telling us, that you're a hypocrite. You're not a hypocrite because you do something that you know you're struggling with. You know what a hypocrite is? A leader, a teacher, someone in a high position that God has given a charge or authority to teach others, and they do opposite of what they know. Some of us ain't even in a place with God to be called a hypocrite. And I have to tell babies in Christ that all the time. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I'm still at the club. Baby, of course you're still at the club. You're getting more results in the club than the church right now. You're getting more results in the club than you're getting your prayer right now. Of course you're going to look like a hypocrite. But God didn't hold people as hypocrites. Read the Bible. The ones he called hypocrites was the ones who had the charge, the power. They had the license. And they said one thing and did another. That's the hypocrites. Some of y'all haven't even gotten to a place where you can even be a hypocrite. So I cancel and I pull down that thought, that word, that conviction, that unruly manner that he tries to put in your mind that I can't pray at home because if so-and-so catch me praying, they're going to call me a hypocrite. That is a lie from the pit of hell. You haven't been charged in a position yet in your walk, some of y'all, in your walk with God where you can be called a hypocrite. Shut him down and shut him out. I'm a hypocrite saved by grace and I'm trying to get back into a place with God. Talk back to him. It is written, Satan. Isn't that what Jesus did? It is written. Get out of here. Satan came into his prayer room. You think he ain't in your prayer room? I feel him breathing. I feel he's a spirit and I feel him breathing. I hear him. One time I had an image in prayer that his nose was right here to me while my eyes were closed. It wasn't good. It wasn't nothing funny about it. Right here. And my, my flesh wanted me to open my eyes so that I could be scared. And I said, well, if he got that close to me, I must be a bad mama because he ain't touched me yet. And I just kept on praying. Just imagine that you got to pull this stuff down. Yes. He reminds you of your sins when you get in your prayer room. Yes. I'm trying to help y'all understand that it may take a year to really tap in. It could take 30 days. It could take right now. It took me a year. But I didn't have anybody telling me that this stuff happened. Everybody made me think that I was just all carnal and just such a mess and, you know, I was choosing to be like that. Well, of course you're going to choose it when that's all you know. Set up a place in your house where you can pray. If it's your bathroom map, let it be that for a while. Then move into a bigger place. Then get to a place where you set it up like it's a date. Set up your prayer time every day at 7 p.m. I used to pray every day after work, come home, get myself together. I used to get up work at 4. By 6 or 7, I'm in prayer. And I pray for an hour. And that's what I did every day. When I started this church, every single day I prayed for an hour when I started this church. When I came out of prayer, I took communion. <clears throat> in my prayer room, I had a communion little table set up, and I took communion. Because he said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me, not the church, not the apostles. Do this in remembrance of me. I need to be in my prayer room in remembrance of him. Don't be religious. Only deacons can serve communion. Only ordained <laughs> leaders can serve communion. You got to wear white gloves. And Remember times how people call me? Can I serve communion at so-and-so's in the hospital? You better serve communion. Hello? Oh, I know I'm hurting half the church right now because we're so religious. Judas served communion. Hello? Took it too. And he didn't hear the devil call him no hypocrite. Get up out of yourself with that mess. You will be habitual and religious, Vicky. It will feel fake. But when you keep doing it, he know he can't mess with you in that area anymore. Your prayer life will advance. Since just doing what y'all have done thus far, how has your perspective of prayer and unanswered prayers change as a result of just this one chapter. How has it changed? Come on, one word. Nobody? Y'all ain't had no change in them. It's okay if you have it. I put down for me, my hope was renewed. I had lost hope in some areas. So my answer was renewed hope. We'll move on. We'll hope y'all get it. Are you experiencing any of the following in your life? Powerlessness, lack of direction, little victory over sin, poor spiritual progress, a weak witness, unfruitful ministry, poverty, or any other problems similar to those? If this is you, in your own book, how would a greater knowledge and understanding about prayer make a difference in your life? Anyone? 
It, make, it lets me know I'm not powerless. Because before then, you think you're powerless yeah. and you succumb. Yeah. And in the prayer, I would go into prayer hoping and expecting yeah. for God to do what he empowered me to do. Yeah. So now that I know I'm not powerless, yeah. I don't Come go on, into sir. prayer being powerless anymore. Yes. I go into prayer knowing what I'm going yes. for. So it's a yes. difference. Y'all agree? Yeah. You're able to go in knowing that what you have to say counts. That God created for us to pray for a reason. Not to waste our time. Do you have disappointments and confusion over unanswered prayer? Has it caused you to abandon or lessen your practice of prayer? Be honest with God about how unanswered prayer has made you feel about praying for yourself and then talk to him. Ask God to forgive you if you have been bitter towards him because of unanswered prayer. To restore you, ask him to restore you to a right relationship with him and to help you better understand his purpose and principles for answered prayer. Do you know unanswered prayer will cause you to have an ought with God? And we will never admit it or confess it because our heart knows that it's wrong. But if it's there, baby, it's there. And we have to confess it and get it out. God wants you to be one that he can trust as an intercessor to not only be, have the confidence to pray, but your prayers are according to his will, so they're always answered. In Luke 18 and 1, Jesus said that we should always pray and not give up. Say that. We should always pray and not give up. If you have abandoned the practice of prayer, begin to renew your relationship with God by praying for a short time every morning and as the needs arise throughout the day. Trust God to reveal his answers to you in his timing with the knowledge, with the knowledge that he loves you and cares for you. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. you. Mm -hmm. He cares for me. Say that. He cares for me. Prayer is not a waste of time. <coughs> That's right. Based on our results, we might think that, but we're going to be out of that. We're going to get out of that completely. So I need everyone in here, especially those who are in a struggle or haven't started, set a prayer time. Write your schedule down right here. You don't have to be the exact time, but pick a time of day. Morning, noon, night. I'm going to commit to this. This is your private place. Do you have a book? Take a second. I'm starting y'all at really ground zero. I know some of us are already above this, but there's nothing wrong with going back to zero and moving forward. Because I want to go higher where I am with God. We have a shut-in this Friday night for our, seven, our 5 a.m. Saturday prayer, and I'm expecting people to come with reports of what they have been fighting with has been moved out of the way. Y'all got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, chapter two. Now again, I just want to remind everyone that some weeks I said we're going to do some video. I got some good teaching on intercessory prayer from Juanita Biden. This old stuff. The stuff that got me fired up about prayer. We're, some days we're just going to come in here and do a video and y'all going to be crazy all over the place because y'all know that woman. If anybody yes. can make you crazy, <laughs> she's going to have you jumping out Amen. seats, hanging yes. from the roof. Yes. But she's going to ignite something inside of this her old stuff. But it's good. It's from her prayer clinic. and But, but I want to keep the book as a foundation for us to stay on track. In chapter 2, the Bible says, the genesis of prayer. The book says, the genesis of prayer. Prayer is mankind exercising dominion on the earth by giving God the freedom to intervene in earth's affairs. We need God. We need heaven to intervene, don't we? Amen. More than ever. Homosexual act taking a big move. And if these folks only move, knew that it's just an imagination. You can pull this stuff down. They have no idea. So in school, our kids are reading books. And we're not doing anything about it because our prayers don't get answered anyway. We got to grab it. We need to understand essential truths about God's nature and his purposes for mankind that lead to the necessity of prayer. The biblical account of creation of humanity reveals these truths. Number one, if God is all-knowing and all-powerful, why do we need to pray? Anyone? Let's get our Bibles and go to John 4 and 24. Why do we need to pray? If an unbeliever was to ask you, well, why do you need to pray? What is your answer? 
I want to give heaven a license to operate. They're going to be like, what? Heaven need a license? That's for us. Say what? He definitely did, and that's a good answer. The first one I want you to go to is um. Did I tell you John four and twenty four? Yeah. Okay, let's look at that. Who has it? I have it. Please. For God is spirit, so those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Mm. What did worship mean? Well, everybody didn't go with me last Saturday. We talked about what worship means. So bow down and kiss. Yeah. And it means intercourse. Mm -hmm. And the first intercourse that was created was in the realm of the spirit. But we'll talk more about worship later. So because he is spirit, and we are spirit first, right? Mm -hmm. The spirit was formed before the body. Yeah. Yeah. Spirit put in the body. The first thing we have to do is first things first. Be reminded of things that we need to do in the spirit. Amen? Amen? So because we worship God, we worship him in spirit and in truth. So we must pray. 1 John 4 and 16. We have to always be connected with God in fellowship. Always. Always. First John 4 and 16 says, We know how much God loves us, and we have to put our trust in his love. But how much will you really know how much he loves you if you're not even in communication with him? Let's, let's, let's just for one second remember the one thing God said to us that pierced us that we would never forget. Does everybody in here have one thing that they just remember where God just... You'll just never forget it. A word or evidence that he was real. That you, God, if you real, make them flowers bloom. And then the, the flowers literally bloom. And you're like, oh, my God. Anybody ever had crazy stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You'd be surprised. The honeymoon stages with him, y'all can get what you want. <laughs> After a while, he's like, you know better. I'm not doing none of that stuff for you. Yeah. You know better. That one thing to know that he loves you. Didn't that make a difference? Yeah. You can have that ongoing relationship, love with him for a long time. Because for some of us, he did that one thing, and then it kind of like, the flesh kind of covered it. We kind of fell off back to the flesh. But when you know he loves you, you want to be in communication with him. I get upset when I get so busy that I don't have time to get into the real prayer. It's, uh, it, to me, it's like, it's like a date. It's like, you know how you have date night with your spouse? And it's, oh, you have, how about this one, girls night? You know how important girls' night is? Come on, you see it all over the Facebook. People put so much importance in girls' night and guys' night too. Super Bowl. That's what prayer becomes when you really tap into a place with him. You long for it. You don't have to feel like it's a punishment. The, 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 the workbook says, complete the following. God is a God of what? And his actions are not what? Mm -hmm. God is a God of purpose. The book says, if we looked at page 29, to begin with, God does everything for a reason. Say that. God, God does everything, everything for, for a reason. reason. Because he is a God of purpose. He is a God of purpose. His actions are not arbitrary. Do you know what arbitrary is? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, spread out is a good way. Not here and there. It's not like negotiating. He's not an arbitrary God. The Lord Almighty has sworn, surely as I've I planned, so it will be. And as I have purposed, so it will stand. That's Isaiah 14 and 24. He swore, surely as I have planned, so it will be. He's a God of purpose. And as I have purposed, so it will stand. It stands. It's not here and there. He's not arbitrary. Isaiah 14 and 24. If you don't pull scriptures into your prayer time with God, that's another very good, important, powerful move to make. Remind God of his word. Not God, you promised me that you ordained marriage and we shouldn't be going through this. No, God, you are a God of purpose. You have plans. We are not here lost and we're not wishy-washy. We're not being tossed to and fro. That's the unstable man. That's not my inheritance. 
My inheritance was I was formed on purpose. You have a plan for my life. No matter what happened with my parents after I was born or while I was still in the womb. Some people aren't even together. I know, sadly, man, the devil is wrecking havoc. Girls haven't even delivered yet. They're not even with the guy. That child's already coming out to dysfunction and problem. But God had a plan and a purpose for that baby. Hallelujah. We got to turn them over to him. Thank you, Jesus. In Genesis 1 and 26, God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule. What do we do? Rule. What two truths does this statement reveal about God's purpose for humanity in relation to prayer? The first one is, it, say it again. Yeah. To rule, to have dominion. So we are to have his nature and his moral character. God created humanity to reflect his character. That's why people need to stop with that saying, I was born like this. This is how we are in our family. All the Johnsons are like this. No, -uh, baby. That's sin. Humanity was created to reflect God's character and personality. We were created to be like him, having his image and likeness. Genesis 1 and 26. This means we were created to have his nature and moral character. The personal reason God created mankind was to establish a relationship of mutual love with his people. To sum it up, God wanted family. God created mankind in his own image so love could be freely given and received between creator and the created. The only reason man can have fellowship with God is that God made man out of his own essence, spirit. He made man to be spirit just as he is spirit. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Although God is the creator, he always emphasized that he is man's father. He wasn't, it wasn't his desire to be primarily thought of as an awesome God or consuming fire, which is in Deuteronomy 4 and 24. God wants us to approach him as a child would a loving father. For some people, therein lies the problem. I didn't know my daddy. What I did know of a father was a heckler. He was abusive. He was a dictator. So we bring this into the prayer life with God. And we think that God is just like that human flesh. As a father, he is to have compassion on his children. So the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Psalms 103 and 13. Secondly, God created humanity to carry out his purpose in the earth. So when Rick Warren wrote, what on earth am I here for? One of the reasons is to carry out God's purpose in the earth. And y'all ought to be able to repeat this back to somebody. Because you're not going to know his purpose if you don't know his purpose. <laughs> you can't guess it. God talks to us in prayer. He talks to you in the spirit once you've connected with him in prayer. You could be in the car and he'd tell you something, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. You ever go to a meeting and he tell you what to say? Mm -hmm. You ever get words from God that you have to look up in the dictionary? Mm -hmm. God will speak to me and I have to say, wait a minute. Literally, I'm telling you the God honest truth right now. I have to look in the dictionary to find out what the word means. He's amazing and he's real. And he's alive and he loves us. And he wants us to be powerful. He wants his church rich, not broke. He wants us to get the glory. He wants the world to be jealous of us, not defeated. Marriages breaking apart, children unruly, always in the newspaper. But we think, oh, that's a PK kid. We even got, we even cut down preacher kid. That's a PK kid. So they're expected to be bad. Come on. This is mankind's primary vocation. When God created man in his image, he gave him a free will. There lies the second problem. 
In this way, man was given the ability to plan and make decisions and then to take action to fulfill those plans, just as God did in creating the world. Man was meant to carry out God's purposes for the earth using his own will and initiative. He was to reflect the God who plans in advance and carries out his plans through his creative acts. I'll go a little slower. I want you to write that one down. We are to reflect the God who plans. We are to reflect the God who plans in advance and to carry out his plans. Faith without what is dead. Amen. Stop always saying, I'm just waiting on God now. I'm just waiting on God's answer. Get the answer. Get into prayer and get the answer. Mm -hmm. We are to reflect the God who plans in advance and carries out his plan. Prayer is so misunderstood. That's why this class... People keep every week, somebody new keeps coming. Because people want to know, why aren't my prayers being answered? I believe that God's real. His word is so alive to me. But I'm getting nowhere in prayer. This is where we need to have our victory. When prayer is answered and we have victory, Sunday mornings, people, woo! You ain't got to push anybody to praise them. Because God is real. I know he is. Because I have my time with him. You can't get people to praise God who have a life of unanswered prayers. We have to push people to praise God in churches all over the world. And the problem goes back to prayer. Purpose and dominion was given to both men and women. God told humanity to rule my world. To rule my world. To be the head and not the tail. To be above and not beneath. That's what he told us. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Number four in the book says, In what manner does God want us to approach him? Like a child. Oh, really? Like a child. Would a loving father. And this is why we can no longer say an excuse. It's because I didn't have a father. Or I didn't have this. Or my father was bad. Because you know why? If you read about a father in the Bible, you learn that what you had was because of the curse on earth. But you can find out what a father is like by reading the word of God. And don't immediately go and run and try to connect with your dad. And, I forgive you, dad. He's like, forgive me for what? <laughs> connect with God as your father. They ain't there yet. They still going to think you're blaming them. So they're going to get defensive. And one thing I can tell you as a parent, parents do not like to hear that they didn't do an A1 job with you. When my son told me that the gun that I thought I hid away, he would play with when I left the house. And the only reason he's not one of those kids, because I was pregnant at 16, had him at 17. That generation of young parents, all the kids are the ones that started the gun drive-by shooting and the gangs and all that. And that's when I remember in the papers for a long time, kids were in the house shooting each other, playing yeah. with guns. Yeah. That, was, that was the generation I, that was supposed to happen. But thanks be to God. I had to find out, we had to find out what a father loves like. What is it like to serve a loving father? How am I supposed to act? It's in the word. We all have problems, right? Say it, we all have problems. We all have problems. But it becomes an excuse, but it becomes an excuse when we let it stop us. When, we let it stop us. when I say no more excuses in this church, it's not that I don't want to hear your problem. We all have problems. Share. Get wise counsel. But when you let the problem stop you, now you're giving me excuses. Mm -hmm. Y'all still love me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Five in the book says, God gave humanity free will. What are the implications of this gift in regard to dominion? Hmm? <coughs> to make decisions? He gave man free will. In this way, man was given the ability to plan and make decisions and then to take action to fulfill those plans, just as God did in creating the world. 
Man was meant to carry out God's purpose for the earth using his own will and initiative. He was to reflect the God who plans in advance and carries out his plans through creative act. God said, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, and let them rule, means have dominion. Amazingly, man was created not only to have relationship with God, but also to share God's authority. Psalms 8 and 6, read it when you have a moment. God did enable man to rule the earth. We know that he first created mankind out of his own essence, <clears throat> which is spirit. Yet since mankind needed to be able to rule in the physical realm of earth, God gave them humanity, physical bodies, manifested in two genders. The spirit has no gender. Hello. Amen. Our genders manifested in the physical body, male and female. This is why the Bible refers to the creation of man in both singular and plural terms. <clears throat> we don't have to deal with that in here because y'all know we get enough teaching on that. <clears throat> the word man and the 26 and 27 verses in Genesis 1 refers to the species that God made, the spirit being called man. Dr. Miles Monroe has his teaching on how in every woman there's a man. And it's not the gender, it's the spirit that's called man, male, masculine, which includes both male and female. This means that the purpose of dominion was given to both of them. Amen? Amen. So God told humanity, Rule over my world. Take care of it. Subdue it and fashion it with your own creativity. Men have been given the freedom to go by God to exhibit creativity while governing the physical earth and all other living things that dwell in it. The earth is to be ruled over, taken care of, fashioned and molded by beings made in the image of Christ. Go. Have dominion. So God did not just create us to have relationship with him but to share in his authority that was number five the implication of it is he wants us to have authority <coughs> you with me got a couple minutes left in what two realms in humanity <clears throat> in what two realms is humanity to carry out dominion over the earth spirit realm which is the unseen realm and the physical realm which is the visible unseen does not mean inexistent Amen. if we don't believe it we are in trouble and that's why we're starting at the basics in this class unseen does not mean inexistence the next one what is the overarching meaning of this dual dominion what verse emphasizes this truth overarching meaning of this dual dominion. Hmm? Read it to me. God wanted them to take the character of the garden, God's presence, light, and truth, and spread it throughout the world. That's the overarching meaning of having dominion. To have in dominion means to take the character of the garden, which is God's presence, light and truth, and spread it throughout the world. That's what having dominion means. It doesn't mean ruling in your little church. Don't nobody care about your 50 member or 5,000 members where you is God in that place. No one cares. If we are not making an impact in the earth, we are not impacting. We good? <clears throat> we can function in the purposes for which we were created only as we are blank to God, which is our source. Hmm? Go ahead, baby, say it. Amen. Amen. Listen, Psalms 82 and 6 says, you are God's. Little g, you are our sons of the Most High. God has made us in his likeness and given each of us free will as a reflection of his own nature. He has created us to be his offspring. Therefore, he called us little gods. Now, this does not mean that we are equal to God or that we are deity. 
Adam and Eve could fulfill their purpose only if they were relying on and in constant communion with the God of the garden. Similarly, we can function in the purposes for which we were created only as we are connected to our source. Number eight is to be connected to God. Question nine, God doesn't want mankind to work for him, but rather with him. Some of us are stuck on the servant mentality. We are more than servants to God. <clears throat> God doesn't want us to work for him, but rather with him. Who actually works for God? Angels. The angels. The angels are his full-time staff. And that's why they get a little problems with us sometimes. God, why are you so mindful of man? Because you his staff. I'm his family. I got rights. I have an inheritance. If, when we begin to think like that, and trust me, by the end of these eight weeks, we're going to have that mindset. You're all going to be so kingdom-minded. You're going to be so out of this Elks Logs and VSW church stuff. You're going to be so kingdom-minded that your authority is going to be crazy in the realm of the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's going to be my honor to watch it happen to you. Yeah. This little church mindset. When God created mankind to share his authority, it was in the context of humanity's relationship to him as his offspring. Question 10. When God created mankind to share his authority. Can you say that? I share God's authority. I share God's authority. authority. Do you believe it? Yes. yes. Sometimes say it to yourself. Affirm yourself. When I have to preach somewhere and I put a lot of pressure on myself, I have to tell, girl, you a preacher. I'm like Mike Tyson in my house. Girl, you a preacher. And you're going to preach today. And you're going to knock this thing out for God. You ain't going to look at their faces. You're going to preach. You want God to be proud. You got to build yourself up. I share in God's authority. Talk like that. If anybody going to claim, talk about you for being boastful, let it be in God. Okay. You may not like me because you think I'm boastful, but you know who to come to when you want prayer. Amen. I have people right now in this region that do not like me. Literally. Won't even talk to me when they see me. But get on the phone or get on Facebook. I know you reach God, girl. Can you pray? My armor bearers be like, I can't stand that. I'm like, but it's not your office. Just hold me up. Because they see disrespect. And dishonor, like they play me like I'm a joke. You know, they think I'm the little shepherd girl yeah. that I used to be when he first called me out with the sheep with David. Mm -hmm. They don't know that I'm in a kingly okay. position now with God. Amen. So when they see the fullness of my office, though they act like they want to mistreat me, they know who to reach out to. On Tuesdays when we run our prayer line, they inbox me. Can you call the prayer line? They don't want to call the prayer line. They want me to pray. And that's all right. Say it. It's all right. Because I share in the authority with God. I don't need no glory. Glory, getting glory makes me get out of place with God. I need to be humble. And it's nothing to pray for people. But I share, say it again. I share. In the authority, in the authority of, God. of God. When God created you, he shared his authority with you because you are his offspring. <coughs> when the Muslims give me that debate, that Jesus isn't the son of God. Da, 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 da. He's his offspring. Yes, he is. And that's the word I always use, offspring. Look up offspring. You're going to have to learn to be word people. You're going to have to look up, not just in the Webster's. Use your concordance. When you see the true meaning of words, you're going to see that us English people don't even know the English language. Because the English language rooted from Hebrew, Greek. You got to look up words. When you find out offspring, you get, remember how I taught on the anointing? And what has God actually charged us with being anointed? You're, you're his offspring. You share in his authority. That's why he expects greater works from you. God didn't create men and women to be servants. That's the second line on number 10. We, we know about bond servants. I've been teaching you all that when I'm teaching you all about apostles and apostleship. But he didn't create us to be servants, but to be sons. The third answer on number 10. We are sons and daughters who share his purposes and his desires to fulfill them. It is mighty important for us to see God's plan manifest in the earth. And if this was just the apostles' house in here, I would remind y'all how Dr. Price mentors and teaches me. 
It is the responsibility of my church, my team, to make sure that my word is manifested in this church. Mm -hmm. That's what God expects to happen in the realm with us. Mm -hmm. We dominate in the earth. What God's will is, that's what we need to make happen. And we need to pray it till it happens. Y'all know in this church, when something happened in the city, where was my intercessors at? When that fireman fell, what were y'all doing? We just had the firemen over in the church. We had microphones in our hands and said we would pray for them. One fell. Y'all not on y'all watch. We have to hold the church accountable. This ain't no VFW. I expect us to hold what God wants to see happen. It is our charge to make sure it happens. But we don't know his purpose and his plan if we're not in prayer. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Eleven. Almost there. We got to get ready to wrap it up. What does the meaning of the original Greek signify about our meaning as God's fellow workers? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 6 and 1. Are y'all getting anything today? Amen. I was talking to the Lord on the way here, and he told me to spend some time just building up your flesh. Just talk to that flesh and get that flesh to understand that you about to be overran out. You about to be overtaken in a fall. I'm about to cancel you out. Yes. I'm about to know that I have the same authority that yes. God gave us in the garden. I am taking dominion. I'm not taking no for an answer. I am charged and deputized to see that God's plans and purposes be fulfilled in the earth. So guess what? We're going to start keeping our word, flesh. Amen. You make me sick. 2 <laughs> Corinthians 6 and 1. Read it, whoever has it. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Second <laughs> Corinthians six one. Take your time. Go ahead and get it. That's all right. I know people our age. We try not to wear them glasses, but. <laughs> Yeah, we, we still trying to have 22-year-old eyes knowing them past 20 years ago. <laughs> Come on, Evangelist, you get it? Yeah. Okay. We then, as workers together, there you go. Him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Amen. It's ours. God's fellow workers. This means it's ours. We work together. So we aren't doing the Lord's work. We are doing our family business. Ooh! Does that do anything for you? Y'all gonna get that out of your mouth from this five seconds ago on. I'm doing the Lord's work. No, you're not. You're doing the work of our family's business. Just like that little bodega, and they gotta cover each other, and they make sure the money come in, and they make sure the customers are being served. This our bodega. We are doing our family business. Mm -hmm. This ain't the Lord's work. This is our work. Mm -hmm. I'm not waiting on the Lord. I am doing my family's business. Yeah. This is my part of our family's business. <coughs> no more I'm doing the Lord's work. Say it. No, no more, more I'm doing, doing the Lord's, Lord's work. Because then you put it on him. Well, it's his work. I can, right. I can take a sick day. <laughs> but when you own the business, yeah. Well, yeah. you ain't missing no days. Because when you own your own business and you don't work, you don't, don't get paid. Hello? We're going to stop. We're going to end your donie. Thank you. Who said it? Amen. Let's go to 12 and we got to wrap it up. What do some people say is the reason prayer originated? What do some people say the reason prayer initiated? Because we were separated from God by our sin. Mm -hmm. And um, and we needed a means to reconnect with him. Wrapping up on the nature of prayer. We know that tragedy came to mankind when Adam and Eve turned their backs on God and desired their own wills apart from his will. Some think prayer originated because we were separated yeah. from God. <laughs> Some think prayer originated because we were separated from God by our sin. Think on that. Some people think it originated because we were separated from God by our sin. And we needed a means by which to reconnect with him. That is one use for prayer. However, it is not the heart of prayer. 
The understand, to understand its essence, we must realize that prayer began with the creation of man, not with the fall of man. It was not instituted after the fall, but before it. So the answer is, prayer existed from the beginning of God's relationship with man. So why do we pray? To be in relationship with God. We don't pray because we have to, because man fell. We pray because that is our way of communication. It gives heaven an open portal to operate in earth, and it involves God in earth's affairs. Any questions? In, in the beginning, um, before the fall of man, where the scripture says that um, Adam walked with God in the cool of the day, that was his communication with God. That, that's Come on, baby. Like, uh, in so the cool, happened. like it was cool yeah, talking that, to God. Uh, <laughs> day which brings me back to how a lot of us pray why are we arguing with God why is our prayers heated and angry are we praying to God or are we fighting Satan <laughs> prayer should be cool it should unless you're repenting it should be joyous and glorious and lighthearted and we should come out of prayer with a glow and a glory we should come out of prayer feeling like I've just been with God who has all authority and has given me all authority is that wonderful does that help with the mind? Yes. Okay. I need y'all to work these few little steps because we're going deep, 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 deeper. I'm going to have y'all at some point, thank you, write down a prayer that you have been waiting for an answer for. And we're going to pull that thing down and we're going to know God's will on it and we're going to get an answer for it. We're not going to be stuck and stagnated by unanswered prayer. This whole chapter I wanted us to spend time on because unanswered prayer kills faith. And you need faith to believe. Amen. You don't need answers to believe. You just need faith to believe. Amen? Amen. Any questions before we go? I got to start my pastor's train. I got to raise up some pastors mm -hmm. in this community so I can get out the way and do my next assignment. Amen. 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 And y'all in here know y'all some pastors and need to get yourselves together. Stop being selfish and I need my time. We need to find out his purpose. Amen. And pray his purpose. Amen. Some of y'all are pastors over women's ministry. Pastors don't mean you pastor a whole church. Right. In our church, we're going to have lay pastors. <coughs> pastors who submit to a pastor, who submits to an apostle, so that everybody can be reached. Amen. The church only decides right here. People fall through the cracks. Because one man was never meant to reach all these people. Amen. Oh, well, we're going. Any other questions? Y'all doing all right? A little more empowered? Yes. When do we meet again? What's the next class this month? 21st. 21st. Y'all like how it's separated out so y'all can still have a life? Yes. Yeah, right? We can do Saturdays for the kids or sleeping late or whatever. Amen? Yes. Amen. We can stop the recording. <coughs> We're going to pray. <coughs> Thank you.